Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream, uh, the first contact day stream. Uh, my name is uh, TPG Ben. Uh, I am game manager at Tilting Point. We have executive producer Joe with me. Joe, thanks for joining. Hi, pleasure to be here. Awesome. So uh, before we kind of kick things off here, uh, I just want to remind you guys that, uh, you know, uh, definitely if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Uh, we have community re rewards uh, that we that we want to give out once we hit a certain subscribe uh, subscriber uh, amount at 650 free dilithium you could get. So if you're not subscribed, definitely please do subscribe um, and uh, and like the video as well if you like the content. Um, cool. So let's 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 get into it, Joe. Uh, today is first contact day. Happy first contact day. Um, the first contact day, everybody. <laughs> uh, one of the many Star Trek, uh, the awesome Star Trek holidays. Uh, so we have a few things uh, on the docket today. Um, and uh, so we're going to start with a quick Star Trek Legends update. Uh, so we recently just released uh, version 0.9.2 uh, that addressed uh, a few of the more critical bugs uh, as we're in early access. So things like the daily goals not resetting, claim button, some claim button functionality, um, malfunction, uh, shuttle recall display issues, uh, and uh, survival survival mode level 101 plus. Uh, there was a crash there that was also addressed. Uh, potentially some missing episodes uh, if you're if you're going through the the UI, and then a crash in the alliance feature. So uh, a couple couple big bug bug fixes here um, as we're getting ready for the full release. Uh, we have uh, more bugs that we want to fix, uh, so uh, we appreciate all the feedback um, around those. Um, and uh, stay tuned for uh, a full release coming up in uh, a little bit. So we're excited about that. Anything else to add for uh, STL there, Joe? Nope. Uh, we're we're continuing work and hoping to improve uh, improve the uh, the experience for all the players. Awesome. All right. So Star Trek timelines. Uh, we just uh, we have started to uh, roll out our ten dot one. Dotto client, uh, Joe, uh, could you uh, remind us and go through the the build notes uh, about the improvements and the and the updates there? Yep. Uh, so for uh, players eager to get these quality of life improvements, uh, uh, Windows, um, Facebook, and Steam are live with the clients. Um, we will be uh, rolling out uh, iOS and Android uh, targeting Monday, um, and hopefully uh, force upgrading uh, Wednesday. Uh, that's our current plan cadence. So, apologize uh, to the players that need to wait for the for the mobile mobile clients. Um, so, what's it, what's in ten dot one? Um, there's uh, sort of two major. Uh, uh, themes with this client. Uh, first was improvements to the continuum equipment feature and sort of everything else was a bucket of various quality of life improvements outside of that. Um, so sort of the chief uh, thing that that uh, I think a lot of people are really excited about is the user flow for equipping equipment in the various features. Um, the way it worked prior was, uh, <laughs> I think as soon as you shared the video, Ben, it's, it's uh, it's yep. killing yeah, the, I, it's I, killing the performance. I, I've just killed it, so uh, I, right. I went to the next screen, so we should be good. Sounds good. Yep. Uh, Got to upgrade your your rig, man. Um, uh, so, <laughs> uh, improved user flow for equipping equipment. So the previous uh, iteration, if you wanted to equip uh, equipment to a character, uh, you'd go to the crew quarters and and choose to do that, but if you were in, say, the continuum and say, seeing that you needed a certain buff to a character to sort of complete the mission, you basically have to exit all the way back out um, and go to the crew quarters to do that and then sort of recall and redo the same decisions that you had to, to make it where you were in the continuum panel, voyage panel, wherever you are. Uh, so in order to improve that, we added a details button. Uh, the details button is part of sort of like the standard uh, view of of crew, 
then the details button will take you to that crew focused in your crew quarters. And when you X out of the crew quarters, then it'll bring you back to the experience of wherever you were. Um, so uh, hopefully that sort of smooths out that sort of mental load that you have to do when you're like, where was I? What was I just doing? I knew I was here for a reason. Okay, I did that and now I need to get back there. Uh, statistics are visible on the equipment uh, equip screen. Um, uh, the vibrance of the VFX and the sort of uh, uh, grid shader uh, has been applied to crew, lower the frequency of it as well, um, so it's not like always yellow. Um, continuing components are now visible in the get menu. Um, we made it so that when you fail a continuum mission, uh, the crew you brought on that continuum mission earns 5 QP. Um, there's new voice lines upon entry of the continuum mission. Uh, really fun recording this with John Delancey. And All right, hopefully that is better. Let me know if that is any better in the chat, please. Sorry about that. Still an amateur <laughs> amateur streamer, streamers over here. Tough hot, uh, you can probably tell, but 100% um, better, looks good now. Wow, much better. Thank the Lord. It's a first contact game <laughs> miracle. Okay. Um, so, uh, hopefully everything, uh, went through. Do we want to run through the, the client release notes again, real quick, Joe, just super quick. Uh, yeah. Uh, big story 10.1, uh, the purpose of continuum equipment features and various quality of life improvements, uh, uh, core functionality added for improved user flow via the details button on crew. Um, uh, stat statistics for equipment now visible on the equip screen, reduced vibrance and effect of the VFX shader on immortalized crew. Continuum components are now visible in the get menu. Five QP is earned on failed continuum missions. New voice lines upon continuum mission entry. Notification pips to inform player of full chroniton containers and continuum achievements avatar VFX on the end of the continuum achievements. Um, various quality of life improvements, chronotons now visible within Galaxy event screens, uh, re-enabled introductory voice lines on login along with a newly recorded one, correctly display player ship level with pre-skirmish battle screen, voyage replicator ration reward replaced with honor, uh, the fleet boss battle, or that will be, that'll be in effect after we uh, deploy the last server associated with 10 to 1 um, mm -hmm. that is coming. Um, uh, fleet boss battles and perform performance improvements should reduce crashing. Um, similar with NPE or first player experience, uh, new player experience performance, um, a few UI uh, improvements, uh, Pulsar icon and inventory being in an odd spot, the Gauntlet UI overlap text, and uh, yeah, a handful of other stuff that I, I didn't take notes on, so that's, that's something we have there. Yeah, so overall, just a big quality of life client, a um, bunch of bug fixes and a lot of improvements to the continuum flow. So uh, we're excited to get that get that out. Like Joe said earlier, we have released on Windows, Steam, and Facebook. Uh, and uh, on Monday, we are aiming to release on Apple um, uh, uh, and and Android. Yeah. Um, and then we're planning to do a force upgrade on Wednesday. Uh, awesome. So now that now that we're done with that, we have a roadmap to look at, which is on screen here. Um, this was the previous roadmap that we uh, that we released back in January. Uh, we tried to we aim to do an update to our roadmap, uh, share with everyone uh, quarterly. That's what we try to aim to do. Um, so let's kind of go through and figure out what of this that we have completed, uh, what has been released, what's still uh in progress uh you know some of the things are going to move from develop development into coming soon and uh yeah so let's let's we'll run right through it of the new one up on screen uh do you want me to take this joe uh no i can run through do you have the okay. grades um the grades yep. one next grades is left. perfect perfect so uh yeah the uh 
when we looked at the roadmap, we wanted to sort of hold ourselves accountable to sort of what we said and and where we are at. Um, so uh, um, when we looked at everything that we stated coming soon, uh, check mark uh, basically means, yep, it's done. We did it. Um, uh, sort of didn't give ourselves like a yellow light, just like it's staying in the same category, stop sign, and and then uh, sort of improving in category with the sort of uh, white arrow. Um, so uh, just going through these uh, item by item, <laughs> um, we had hoped to have the, the new traits and trait audit live at this point. We don't, unfortunately, so that is uh, stopped but to staying here in the, in the same category. Uh, we've delivered new equipment um, to, to the game, so that's exciting. We did the Voyager trait collection and the Villains Mega Arc, Voyager Villains Mega Arc. We conducted the uh, Player's Choice Survey and uh, the Continuum UX improvements. Uh, can't can't say we did it because uh, iOS and Android players are still not playing those continuum UX improvements, but they're coming really, 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 really soon. Um, uh, new Gauntlet crew, new Honor Hall crew. Uh, hope you're enjoying the the, the new uh, data as Masaka uh, there. Um, and uh, we did a collection milestone off it uh, audit. Um, development stuff, new event type. Um, we have progressed in development, but it's still staying in development. Uh, it's probably right on that precipice of coming soon in development per like sort of our definition a few months away. Um, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done on the event type. Um, we'll get to that in the next thing. Uh, event mechanics updates, uh, similar similar state. Um, Player's Choice Month content, we're, we're on track and moving that to coming soon. That's the, that's the arrows. The web shop loyalty program again we'll be coming soon um, and then a great thing when you're looking at later stuff uh, early game optimizations we, we were able to get them into the 10.1 client as well as some things that we've just been tweaking on the other side um, uh, still in concept um, new game mode uh, again progress made here we've we've gotten a deeper uh, understanding of our our targets for this um, but it still hasn't been greenlit for development yet. And uh, further event optimizations, again, pending the event updates that we're talking about in development, that needs to stay in concept because they're sort of downstream of the new event stuff. Um, do you want to take us to the new one then? Yeah, so let's, let's do that. We have a brand new roadmap um, for, uh, for April. Uh, so a couple a couple new things here uh, in the coming soon for the Continuum UX and Quality of Life. Again, this will be rolled out to fully everyone on Monday when when iOS and uh, Android are uh, are uh, released uh, for 10.10. New traits and trait audit um, that is coming very soon. Do we have a, a date for that yet, Joe? Or I, I know it's it's pretty we're pretty close. Um. I don't. I don't have a day for it. Uh, I think I. I said, hopefully by by the end, uh, within a month. But uh, yeah. again, it's been one of those hairy things that uh, uh, we've already delayed uh, delayed it once for 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 um, the development sort of prioritization of it. So I, I don't want to commit to any dates at this point. But it should be yeah. within two months per our coming student category. <clears throat> All right, uh, moving on, we have an animated April mega, uh, which we're super excited for that. Uh, we have uh, Discovery Season 5 content coming very soon as well. I uh, hope everyone uh, is enjoying the new season so far. Uh, updates to Continuum uh, Rewards. Uh, this is something that uh, I have been uh, uh, talking a lot in the Discord, in the uh, Devs Ask channel. Uh, we'll get uh, a little more, I believe we'll get a little more into that uh, with one of the questions uh, coming up. Um, but uh, we are going to make an adjustment uh, to the continuum rewards. Um, we are uh, taking out merits for the normal uh, reward. We are, uh, I believe it's 150 
uh, quantum, we're moving to the normal reward. Uh, 150 to lithium into the uh, elite reward, completion reward. Uh, and then we're uh, going to be adding a five star behold to the epic uh, reward. Um, so uh, we wanted to do that change uh, and then gather player feedback uh, and, and take a look at some data and then uh, potentially make another change after that if it warrants it. Um, but that's our current plan for that. Um, we would just want to see a little more engagement uh, out of the feature. So making a uh, adjustments to rewards uh, is, is the way to do that. Awesome. And then uh, we have a another new Honor Hall crew uh, coming up very soon, uh, actually soon as next week, I believe. Uh, we have Player's Choice Month as well, um, June. So we're planning a lot of cool stuff uh, already for that. Uh, and thanks for the uh, all of the uh, player, player votes um, on what you want to see for Player's Choice Month. And uh, and then the web shop loyalty program as well coming soon. Okay. Yeah, I'll jump in here for development. Yep. Um, just give you a break from talking. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, this is something we had teased before uh, for the development uh, of of new event type. Uh, we are targeting voyage uh, behavior as the main. Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, appointment gameplay. We're we're looking to replace uh, the dilemma system for the events uh, to have a different active strategic gameplay component. We are going to run a, a midweek uh, voyage event beta as part of the rollout for this. So that will be our first sort of test of it or that allows us to sort of take any feedback and then address some things prior to full voyage event integration into our cadence. Um, Galaxy event V2, for the performance of, of this particular event type, uh, we looking into it and looking to align some of the, the sort of gameplay themes that we were going to probably continuously talk about through the year of 2024, but looking to uh, add some more strategic components to the Galaxy event gameplay system. Um, and a new Gotten crew will be coming. Um, as far as concept stuff goes, we sort of talked about how it sort of stayed, stayed in the same uh, category. However, uh, the new game mode, we are kind of having to prioritize between uh, sort of new active gameplay systems or new meta gameplay systems. Um, so we're, we're looking at a handful of things, but uh, we're still in the sort of proposals concept stage there before we greenlay for, for development. And the event optimizations are going to come sort of hand in hand from the release of Voyage Events and the Galaxy Event V2. So that way uh, we can take the sort of early performance issues, anything that we need to optimize for that and, and come take those forward. Perfect. All right. So that's our roadmap where we're heading. Um, and uh, our last. Last part of the stream will be a Q&A. Uh, our community manager has collected a bunch of questions that you guys have asked. Um, so we're gonna run right through them and, uh, and answer them for you. All right, so uh, are, are you planning to add any ships from the, from the Frankenstein fleet scene in DS9 other uh, than that, the Jaeger class? Uh, it is uh, hard to imagine that we won't at some point include another, uh, but there are uh, none currently uh, on our content roadmap. So uh, definitely feel free to, to uh, I believe we have a thread on the forums uh, adding uh, any ship that you would like to see come to the game. So definitely leave that there. And then just question for the chat, what is your favorite class, favorite class of ship? Uh, when will the inventory limit of 1,000 items be increased or the nasty random way of dropping access items to be changed? Uh, it would be a lot better if it worked like crew overflow. I agree. We understand that this is a pain point. Uh, so hopefully this would be something in the future, like in a future QOL update. Right now, we don't have anything planned around this, uh, but I believe we do have uh, an item related to this on the backlog. So. Um, something that uh, hopefully we'll, we will be able to look into uh, during a future 
QOL update. Uh, Joe, you want to take yeah. the next one? Sure. Yeah. Um, ubiquitous, ubiquitous board queen in continuum mission was a great addition to the wards for the four week period. Will there be other CM uh, exclusive legendary crew, or is this like Mirror Tuvok and the faction store when it's done? Um, so, first, I, I do want to clarify that the Ubiquitous Board Queen was uh, an elusive crew that was only available in the continuum missions for that time frame, but we will be uh, entering her into the time portal at some point given the ephemeral nature and access to the crew. So, it's not like the Honor Hall where there's a consistent point, similar with Gauntlet. Um, where you can have access or potentially access that crew. Um, so it's calling it CM exclusive. It's not, it's not the same exclusive as the other exclusives that we do have in the game. Um, and the answer is yes, we have planned more continuum crew to come, uh, as well as the updated to the regular wards that Ben mentioned previously. Um, next question. Um, how do you anticipate adding new trait-based equipment to the game? Have you considered other delivery methods for equipment versus just building it? So after this latest drop, um, we want to see how the crew meta evolves for a bit before making more changes. Uh, so we intend to add more trait-based equipment, but can't pinpoint where we'll be targeting next. As far as delivery methods, we do want to be careful to not overinflate rewards in other spaces and do believe that the gameplay loop with Continuum is the best place for them for now. Um, and yeah, last one, <laughs> go for it. Uh, yeah, have you considered changing the level 30 Captain's Bridge reward from a single portal pull to something else, perhaps something that could link multiple game modes like Qubits uh, or uh, Quantum? Excuse me. Um, yeah, the uh, the fleet boss battle system uh, for the players that are highly engaged in the feature are leveraging the existing rewards to generate a decent amount of honor. The rewards in the captain's bridge are extraordinarily valuable, including exclusive crew and ship bonuses that are transformative to a lot of players' uh, gameplay. So while we understand that the disappointing looping reward, it is very difficult to justify another reward spot where uh, where we are seeing players earn currencies and replacing them which means to avoid uh, the other feature loops. Um, uh, but it is something that we we have gotten a lot of uh, feedback uh, on. Um, we just don't have something currently planned, uh, but that's something that we'll definitely keep in mind. Move on to the, the next, next category. Yeah. Um... Next category regarding roadmap. Uh, in the February stream, you showed us the roadmap for this year. Could you please share with us how it's progressing? Have plans changed or anything? No, no, we can't do that. We just did. That's why. Um, so we can move on to the next question. Um, how long does it take to develop a mega event? And would you consider rotating all primary stats through a six month cycle for mega events? So uh, I wrote up a really long one for this one. So. Uh, buckle in. So content is developed in stages. Uh, for example, we have a rough idea of what we're doing through 2024 uh, with the mega event in December being the fuzziest. And what do I mean that, by that? The first stages of developing a chunk of content, whether it be a mega event or supporting a season launch of a show or whatever it might be, is sort of coming up with the overall theme of the content. Uh, as an example, we decided to do an animated April mega event towards the end of 2023, but that's just sort of putting our stake in the ground. Um, after a couple brainstorms, our narrative designer, Amber, who, uh, if you haven't watched that interview with her, I highly recommend watching it. It's a good, it's a good, good watch. Um, she'll outline the crew she wants to leverage in the story. Um, this needs to be completed several months before, and for context as to where we are now, we have all of the new crew selected for our events through November. Um, the last planning step is filling in the rest of the information and finalizing placement for context as to where we are here. We're completed through June, but I would expect July and August at the very least, possibly through all the way to November to be finalized by the end of April. All the while these planning bits are going on, cabs are being generated for the new crew we identified earlier in the process, ship models are being built, the event narrative is being written, data is made, etc. So, like, how long does it take to develop a mega event? Like, from the point of, like, putting our stake in the ground to, like, live, it's probably something in, like, six months. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's 
not being like that's like span time rather than like the amount of dedicated dev time at any point and who's responsible for what. The second part of this question, uh, as far as like rotating through primary stats through a six month cycle for mega events. Um, we do try to be mindful of the cadence of the mega crew stat representation. Um, but in this case, the narrative and whether we feel a crew is representative of the idea of a mega crew come before a perfect distribution of the skills. Um, so it's it's something that we we definitely keep in mind. Um, and it's not dictated necessarily by the primary, um, but so much as like the sort of array of, of skills. But it's something that we can start thinking about right now, the sort of uh, first party for the decision is like, is this person going to be able to sort of tell the story and participate throughout a four week arc? And what what skills and stats fit best for them? Um, and so that's that's sort of how we go about it currently. But Awesome. Um, do you want to take the next one, Joe? I'm messing around with some settings sure. over here. <laughs> yep. Um, so we had a player's choice survey weeks ago. Could you please share the results? Um, so a little summary from that, um, the player's choice, uh, was for the mega event, uh, STT originals, crossover characters and cameos, uh, with, uh, the Boimler character from Strange New Worlds, uh, select as the, uh, mega crew, uh, the campaign uh, was for Beyond Facade with the new crew Changeling Kira, um, uh, existing crew Emperor Giorgio, and uh, Captain Dathan Avatar. Um, uh, <laughs> unhappy with the lack of exclusive avatars, 54% uh, of you all said, uh, either way, it doesn't matter as my avatar choice is not reflected in the way that the uh, exclusive avatars come to you. Um, uh, excited for up to upcoming game features updates. Uh, fleet boss battles was at 22%. Uh, favorite mega arc of 2023 was the Strange New Worlds Explorer arc at 27.1%. Um, top three most enjoyed Star Trek timelines features, collecting crew, uh, cooperating with my fleet and mega events, um, 77%, 50%, and 46%. Um, the makeup of the list was reporting 60% VIP 14, which was pretty incredible. And how long have people been playing Star Trek Timelines? 68% of people participating in the survey played for over five years, which is amazing. And uh, if you're curious, uh, everyone's favorite series is the best Star Trek series, which is Deep Space Nine, 28.5%. There I go, alienating 71.5% uh, <laughs> of our viewers. <laughs> um, uh, next one, can you give an update on the trade audit for the four new traits being added to the game? Uh, yes, it is for and support. Uh, and our next planned engine upgrade uh, will be likely later this year uh, or uh, very early uh, next year. So uh, typically with engine upgrades, that's when you'll see a lot of, uh, you'll see performance get better um, just through doing an engine upgrade. So hopefully later this year, we'll be able to uh, do that. Uh, what is your hope for the official TPG Discord? Will it replace uh, the legacy forums? So our hope for the TPG Star Trek Discord is that we have a place to share all exciting things we are working on, that we have a place to share all exciting things we are working on, uh, discuss things with players, and provide a space for giveaways and, and, and more. I'm sure our community manager, Polo, uh, can get into that uh, on, on Discord at some point. As far uh, as what it means for the forums, we are considering uh, their removal, but uh, do not have a concrete target, uh, whether it will or when uh, might it happen. So uh, it is something that we're we're passively looking at. Uh, we haven't made any decisions uh, based on that yet. Um, yeah. So uh, what do you think about the idea of making the premium track in campaigns? more attractive for veteran players by introducing a campaign behold, just like for the ultimate track. So this is a very interesting uh, thought. It is something that we could potentially try. Uh, I have to look into the data around this and, and, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, this is a great question. Uh, it's probably something that I can ask in the ask uh, in the devs ask Discord uh, channel. 
in our in our in our tilting point discord so uh if you're not uh, a member of that of a tilting point star trek discord uh please join it um i've been asking a bunch of questions over the past few weeks uh, in that channel uh and getting players opinions so it's uh very very valuable to me and if you want to have a direct impact on the game uh join the discord and and be active in that channel uh, so actually piggybacking on that, there was a lot of discussion about Continuum and the game economy in general in the official Discord the last few days. Could you please share some of your takeaways from those discussions? So yes. So first of all, that, that channel is uh, everything that I've been looking for for a long time, uh, having a place that I can kind of directly talk to all you amazing folks and players, uh, ask questions, get your opinions uh, on potential new changes. Uh, and it directly impacts uh, the game and our development decisions. So we really, really do appreciate everyone's thoughts and feedback. Uh, definitely uh, join the Discord uh, and uh, be active in that channel uh, if you want to have, uh, if you want to hear, uh, get your opinions heard. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to remember all the questions that I asked. I asked some around uh, Chronoton uh, economy. Um, we. Um, we, when we released Continuum, we had that sync there. Uh, if you want to run more Continuums to sync in some Chronotons. Um, so uh, with that Continuum feature, we wanted to try to, to remove some Chronotons from the economy. Uh, this feature did uh, uh, help with that goal, uh, not fully, uh, which is why we want to also make some adjustments to the uh, rewards in Continuum to make uh, that feature a little more uh, active and get a little more engagement. So um, I do see some some ch uh, some folks in the chat saying that the the new rewards that I laid that I laid out for Continuum um, kind of a bummer, but uh, you know I definitely want to hear hear opinions of that uh, in the Discord. Um, so uh, we'll keep that thread going, uh, and who knows I may make an adjustment to that. So um, awesome, uh, and then. Uh, some of the other questions I'm trying to remember. One was around uh, the continuum rewards, which we just discussed, and then I think there was one more. Um, yeah, you had a pretty deep, deep sort of conversation about event stuff. Um, yes, yes, around track. around engagement of events. Um, uh, which events do players like to engage with the most? So uh, last week, Joe and I were having uh, a lot of conversations about. Uh, actually, it was two weeks ago. Uh, around uh, what our new event type is going to be. Um, uh, as you can see on the screen here, Voyage Voyage Events is going to be, uh, you know, uh, is 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 going to be uh, what we're going to what we're going to move forward with. So, uh, with a Voyage of Events, uh, it's very similar to a shuttle a shuttle mission, the faction mission, where uh, you're sending out uh, kind of crew on this voyage for a period of time, but you're coming back. Uh, often to to do some sort of strategic gameplay, uh, something that's definitely way more involved than than what, what a shuttle mission is. You're just sending out, coming back, sending another one. Uh, this is with a voyage. You send a voyage out. You hit a dilemma, but it's going to be some sort of uh, interactive uh, gameplay, which we're really excited uh, about. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to get a lot of opinions from players on what uh, events that they like to engage with the most um and and why and and it was uh, very valuable information to get um around uh i was surprised that a lot of players were more engaged or enjoyed skirmish events more uh and i think they came to the conclusion that the rewards uh are are the likely uh the likely result of that um but it was really interesting around uh, with skirmishes. You have to be sitting there. You have to be tapping constantly. With faction events, uh, you're kind of, you know, you're you're setting your sh sending a shuttle out. You come back three hours later, so it respects your time a little more. And I was just trying to understand from the player point of view, uh, you know, which what I guess type of event gameplay uh, is more appetizing. Uh, and it sounds like there's kind of a opinion for both, uh, which is which is pretty interesting. So I got a lot of valuable data from that um, that informed uh, the our our next event type in our feature. So um, yeah, and I think that was all the questions there. Um, um, great. 
yeah yeah i feel like we kind of just uh went off on a tangent before yeah, sorry. <laughs> this card stuff no no worries um do you want to take a handful from the chat um before uh doing our sort of like content reminder stuff to sort of wrap up q a and that way yeah i think uh, we yeah i do do a few more questions here on the on the list if we want to hit these um the uh 24 valor made uh, playing some boss battles was really fun. Is there any plans to increase the amount we get per day? Uh, this is so glad you had fun with our uh, live issue uh, and the reward for our live issue. Uh, but no plans on adjusting Valor amount uh, at this time, um, though it was nice to see a solid spike in food boss battles. Um, I think that's mostly. Uh, actually, one here, Fleet Boss Battle uh, objective event has been missing for a while. Is it gone forever or you're just going to uh, be run more infrequently? So it's not gone forever. I typically like to have at least one active, longer running objective event at a given time. The past few months, we've had a couple uh, of the free giveaway uh, crew tied with a month long objective event. Uh, so uh, that's why we haven't run like a Fleet Boss Battles objective event in a while or the you know, kind of in between the two week continuum objective event. But we will be running those more. Um, I believe we have one or two, or, two, or two of those planned for May. So they're coming up, they're coming up soon. Got it. Um, yeah, just soliciting some from the cat chat. Um, I see uh, Trek Time asks who are HG Games. Um, High Ground Games has been the primary development partner for Star Trek Timelines since uh, 2021. Um, uh, as of uh, January of 2023, uh, they have been uh, sort of running uh, running the sort of back end side of, of uh, sort of our publishing relationship to their the development, which we can get into, uh, probably a, a bit of a rabbit hole explaining how that works. But um, uh, yeah, they're 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 the people that help uh, design and build and and break uh, and and bring the game to to players. Um, and they've been working with us for a very long time, and uh, we are thrilled that we are able to sort of show the their their efforts on on the front of the screen with their with their logo entering the garden. Um, the uh, uh, the um credits have also been updated um to include a lot of their names uh well all of their names uh for the folks of a lot of people have changed uh on their team on that side um but yeah so uh sort of a uh veneer change but uh effectively it's 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 more that we wanted to to celebrate working with a successful partner that we're really happy with and we put their name on the front absolutely Yep. Awesome. Any, uh, any... So no more WRG now, only TP games. Yes, uh, the entity of WRG uh, was, was never a explicit legal entity. Um, and uh, functionally, that the team uh, designed the list for, for TP games. So. Awesome. Any other questions from the chat? I'm scrolling through. I don't see too many. A lot of people talking about skirmishes. Um, nice. Would love yeah. more is there... and squadron game modes. Any chance this is prioritized? The the meta gameplay uh, proposals that we are exploring at this point are social, um, Alexander. Um, but uh, it's one of those things that uh, we kind of have to figure out what gets prioritized first. Is the the meta social stuff more important, or is there an active gameplay component that uh is going to sort of drive the behaviors that we want to see yeah a lot of a lot of active discussions on on, on that between joe and i right now um yeah. awesome do we do we want to talk any more about the the voyage event um uh i guess i can tease a little more of that um without going too much into detail because obviously things can change um, but just to give a little taste of, of what's to come, so uh, we spent a lot of time on the proposals for this, um, and what we're aiming to do is having a a voyage uh, uh, voyage event type. You 
put 12 crew on your voyage, uh, you send them out. Um, and instead of a dilemma, there is a strategic active gameplay there that is modeled around gauntlet functionality that with a with a major twist. Um, you know, we 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 obviously hear uh, a lot of players' uh, opinions, uh, the vocal few saying that they love gauntlet, but majority saying it's just too RNG driven. Uh, all of the concerns and feedback that we've gotten from gauntlet over the years, we have uh, focused on that. Um, making sure that uh, that's not going to be the case uh, coming into this feature. So um, we're we're really excited with the design. Um, uh, there's a, a ton of potential here, and we think that everyone is is really going to enjoy it. Um, especially since we have basically removed all those pain points from Gauntlet um, with having that uh, Gauntlet kind of gameplay set, uh, Gauntlet gameplay within this Voyage event. Um, so we'll have a lot more details coming up uh, over the next few months. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess is there anything anything else that we should uh, we should uh, pinpoint there, Joe? Um, no, I, again, like I think the the format of the active component of the event is is the uh, I think like the fuzziest part that like when, once we we were playing through it uh, more and and understanding like what what it means to have 12 people at your disposal with the different skill sets and the type of crew that you're bringing in here. Um, we're definitely excited for it to create a new type of crew that is useful in a different way through this event system. Um, a couple more questions popped up in the chat. I think there's mm -hmm. just a delay. Um, so Andrew Gilbertson asks, gauntlet loot box rewards, can we remove the three-star trainers or make them less common? Um, yeah, as far as like addressing uh, sort of innate gauntlet rewards structures, uh, we haven't gone in there in a while. Um, they're probably due for a pass, um, but uh, the, the gauntlet uh, system, and I think this is true of the Voyage system as well, and there's definitely a lot of uh, chatter about how you access these exclusive rewards, which, are tied to a very rare chance so it's just a matter of just to keep on hitting the thing over and over and over and over again until you get lucky right um so those things are tied to having uh sort of those rewards balanced with uh some things that are not as helpful uh in the, those cases so so maybe that is out of balance and we can take a look at that um six star crew <laughs> wheel oh jesus um uh and then uh uh, Dan Javent asks, any plans to make some small amount of qubits available to early players? The cadet equipment is interesting, but unbuild unbuildable until you have high quality crew to put through the con continuum missions. Um, yeah, it's it, it's it's an end game feature, the continuum missions and equipment. Um, and uh, the original thought between the cadet uh, equipment was the cadet equipment was just uh if it if it would make them leverageable in another system um so it's not so much used for new players to have like a super powered two star um it's it's for their elder players to pull their two stars out of the freezer and 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 buff them up and see if see if it, if they're they're helpful in a different way um possibly during an event or that kind of thing um if that's not the behavior we're seeing with it um, which we can we can dive deeper into the cadet, cadet equipment specifically, um, possibly leveraging them to improve some of the new player uh, sort of uh, you know growth experience of mm -hmm. taking their existing two stars and making them more competitive in events and that kind of thing because they've invested in them already. Um, uh, I see another one here. Any chance to add schematics to the honor hall? Um, we're not not adding. Uh, schematics for like all the ships to the honor hall um we have had talks around uh, a separate sort of store um a way to get uh schematics from specific ships um that's just not tied to the honor hall so we have a uh, just super early discussions on that nothing concrete um no promises on on releasing that or anything but uh, but we have heard, you know, uh, 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 players' uh, complaints around, you know, not able, not able to, uh, uh, to, to kind of target and, and upgrade a specific ship. So it is something that we are thinking about. Yep. Um, 
uh, I'll take this one. Alexander Kostra, apologies for butchering your name, would love more one and two star crew with like even single traits. Um, the 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 chief uh, the chief sort of delay and deprioritization of generating one and two star crew is uh, their their uh, negative in regards to the investment we do into sort of building the crew, creating the art, getting it approved and everything else versus like what uh, players will will leverage and access it for. Um, the 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 only is like solution that 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 we had sort of thought of is like if we sell it, uh, nobody's gonna buy a one or two star crew for the for the same prices as a four or five star. So it, it doesn't it doesn't it, it doesn't make sense. We try to do them at uh, sort of crimes of opportunity where we integrate it under a big sort of brand push like we did for for lower decks integration with uh, adding them as ensigns. Um, uh, but there's none planned through 2024 as it stands right now, um, and. Uh, we just have to be mindful of how we introduce that crew um, because uh, it's 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 like a net negative to introduce a one or two star crew to the game. Um, uh, and then Avitrek asks, how will event crew be featured? Play into the voyage event, we can't score wars, longer length voyage. Um, uh, this is uh, still pending. I think we have some details on that, but I don't want to misspeak uh, yeah, about my current understanding of them. Uh, some some of that is going to have an effect on uh, the active gameplay component, and uh, that might affect the the uh, the sort of length of voyage. But we're also looking at um, how the appointment gameplay sort of uh, uh, ranges in time as well. So so possibly. Uh, in in the two event proposals and and uh, I think it's an anti matter um, yeah bonus as well there yeah um, but yeah so yes. I guess I'm an opportunity yeah yeah Sorry. exactly um, awesome um, any other questions uh, doesn't look like uh, it. I got one more will human Neelix be stripped of his originals title since he is actually in the Star Trek feature film. Um, I wonder if there'd be a good time for that. I'll just say that. Cool. All right. Uh, I think that's all the time that we have. Thanks for, uh, thanks everyone for joining in. Thanks for taking the time with me, Joe. Um, sorry for the the uh, some technical issues at the beginning of the stream. Seems to figure it out. Uh, I'm going to probably expense uh, another stream, uh, streaming laptop uh, this weekend. Uh, so uh, so this won't happen again, but I uh, really appreciate everyone uh, joining on. Uh, definitely uh, check out our Discord. Um, and uh, again, I'm, I'm always we're always asking questions and interacting with folks in there, especially in the Devs Ask channel. Uh, if you want your opinions to be heard and have a direct impact on the game, uh, respond to respond to our questions there um and uh we we always really appreciate it subscribe to the youtube channel so everyone gets a free 650 dilithium and uh yeah i think i think that's it it for us um awesome thank you everyone everyone